So I hear CM Punk is back. Is that right? He's CM back Punk's in WWE. Back. CM Punk signed a multi-year contract. Yes. Wow. With a WWE. Multi-year contract. He's, he's he's back. He's back with WWE. Yeah. Well. Um, the deal came together about ten days ago. Obviously, kept a complete secret from almost everyone. Um, Paul Levesque said that the TKO people found out watching the TV, which I thought was ridiculous until I asked around and I was told the exact same thing. They said, "Like, look, the the, the TKO people, no matter what, you know, we're talking about like Mark Shapiro and Ari Emanuel, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if they if some of them knew, but I was told basically that, you know." It's not their gig. You know what I mean? They're there to do business deals and make money, and the creative is in the hands of WWE. And, you know, it would be the same way with UFC. You know, I mean, if, if like, let's say, let's say there was a big falling out with Dana White and Conor McGregor, which I guess could be not, which is not equivalent because Conor McGregor is actually a much bigger star. But the, um, but if there was, you know, it would be like Dana's, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be like they would go in there and go, you've got to sign him. It's like, that would be Dana's gig. So um, it was Nick Khan call, you know, in the end, it was Nick Khan who made the call. Vince had nothing to do with it. Paul Levesque had obviously a lot to do with it. And those were the two guys that, the, that were the point guys. And, um, you know, aside from that, um, you know, it, it made sense to do it on this show. Um, from what I understood, you know, it was one of those things where, it was a no, except if they felt that the public demand was there. And I actually wrote that in this week's issue, you know, in the sense that if they believe that the demand was there, they're not going to be an organization that fights the fans. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you know, would Vince have done it in the same situation? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. I mean, I always expected that someday he would be back and probably sooner than later. And the other thing, too, is... is there's there's other you know a lot of other things. I mean, number one, there is a wrestling war going on, and when it comes to you know if you tally up the free agents, um, or the people whose contracts are up and things like that that we're looking at you know going both places, AW's done a hell of a job as far as signing them, and Will Osprey being the real big one, um, Kenny Omega being the other real big one, but Will Osprey being the well, I mean Kenny Omega would be the bigger one of the two, um, but. That deal was done, you know, months ago now. But Will Ospreay was the big recent one. And, you know, there's a lot of movement in WWE right now as far as um, they don't want anyone leaving. Um, and the um, there's a lot of people who are being offered very big money um, that are, you know, you know, besides just punk, but other people who are being offered very big money, much more than they're making. Um, to stay. I mean, a lot of people thought that with Endeavor, it's going to be like, you know, no one's going to get big contracts. And it's actually been different. And one of the things is, is that, you know, from the Endeavor standpoint, you know, if you look at like UFC, they're used to paying, you know, um, 17% to, you know, roughly 17% to talent. And in WWE, it's way less than 17%. It is, you know, if you if, if it was actually a legitimate 17%, the average mid-level guy there would be making, you know, probably two and a half million a year. And, and that is not the case. So they're not like, um, you know, people going like, now they're going to nickel and dime and they're going to, you know, let people go and things like that. And it's like, you know, they got... Uh, they're grossing, you know, way over $1.3 billion, million, uh, $1 billion a year. And, you know, they are not, you know, I mean, I mean, there's guys that are making a lot of money right now. And there's guys that are making a lot more money. And if AEW, you know, depending upon uh, the next TV deal they get, um, those guys, you know, who are uh, who have contracts due in 2024 after that TV deal, if the TV, you know, once that new TV deal, which is the key thing, is is once the new AEW TV deal comes through, if it's a big increase, then every wrestler with name value would behoove themselves because they could get, if you got name value, you're going to be able to get a really big contract right now, much bigger than you would, you know, in most cases, people would have ever dreamed, you know, um, because it's just the nature of two companies that 
have a lot that, that that are grossing a hell of a lot of money. Obviously, WWE much much more than AEW, but AEW would be grossing with a with you know with the TV deal people have talked about. And again, until it happens, who knows? But um, 2024 is a good time to be a free agent, and WWE is trying to lock people up, just like Tony did with the Young Bucks and Omega and Adam Page. They're trying to do that right now with people who, you know, even even over a year left on their deals, they're trying to renew them for multi-year deals. So um, there's a lot of movement there. And um, it was, uh, you know, it's a business move. I think this hurts AEW considerably. Um, just from a perception standpoint. Um, the reason I say that is because of what happened with Cody Rhodes. And this is, um, I mean, Punk is not like um, like what I would call the spiritual beginner of AEW like Cody Rhodes was. But Punk was the biggest star AEW ever had. You know, I mean, that's just the reality of it. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but it's just, you know, as far as star power, he did move numbers more than anyone else. Was, did Max surpass him um, on the last run? Yes, he did, you know, but it's still, you know, when Cody left, he was not the number one guy either, and he went to WWE and became, you know, pretty much the number two guy almost immediately and is probably really the number two guy there right now behind Roman, and um, Punk is going to be, you know, when you switch sides, you know, you get really, really big. And um, Well, there is one major difference, and that is that Cody did not get fired. Yeah. So, so. I can't say they're completely comparable. What, no, one comp- guy, one I, guy I, chose I, to go to WWE over AEW. Yeah. The other guy got fired and had no choice. Well, he had no choice, but WWE had a choice. Well, sure. But the but the but still from a perception standpoint, yes, people and people know that he was fired. People know that it, it was not a guy who. But it's still it's still a big star going there. And from um, I mean, I look at what happened with Cody, and um, it hurt AEW. I mean, you know, it hurt their momentum. It hurt cer- certain aspects of their perception. Helped WWE a great amount. And I think that this will probably. Um, I, I mean, at first, it's going to help WWE. Um, I mean, obviously, they brought him back in the perfect place. Obviously, the rating for Monday night is going to be, you know, whatever it was going to be, it's going to be way, way up from what it would normally be. And um, I think the first, you know, I'm going to guess his first match would be the Rumble. Uh, That I don't know. I'll probably find out more during the week. But um, and maybe it won't. Maybe it'll bring him back even quicker. But um, I think that, you know, going to some of these cities for the first time, I think that attendance will be up and. Um, and and again, it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see, like again, what kind of a deal he gets because there are guys who are able. Because I don't know that from you know at his age and everything like that, that doing you know even a hundred days a year is a lot. It's less than it used to do. But um, you know, I mean, you know, does he have a deal where it's going to be for fewer dates, which is probably the best for all concerned. Um, so you know, there you go. But. Uh, yeah, it was uh, the guys in the match knew, um, you know, as far as like it wasn't like he came out and nobody knew the guys in the match knew and they didn't. You know, that would have been I think some would have been very, very upset if they didn't know because it would be like the company swerving them. And I think they don't want to be, you know, they don't want to do that to their talent. You know, they, they you know what I mean? So I so that much was going on as far as the Seth thing goes. That was all an angle. And, um, you know, people have asked me about Drew. So the deal with Well, the two things that we're talking about here is after the show went off the air, there was a deal where Seth was very, very upset, and they had uh, the wrestlers and uh, I think um, who else was out there with him trying to calm him down? Uh, Corey Graves was out there, and he's flipping off, and he's all angry and everything like that. That was an angle. That was 100%. That was 100% angle because, because playing off the fact that months ago, when somebody asked Seth Rollins, you know, it's like, he's a cancer, we don't want him. Which later, by the way, he said, you know what, I mean, if it's, um, you know, if the company wants him, you know, and it's the right thing, you know, he doesn't have a problem with it. But because he made that statement, um, they figured they could do like a shoot angle with it, and it makes sense. So, yeah. And then yeah. Drew, as soon as the match ended, and before Punk came out, he left the ring, he was holding his eye, and he just stormed to the back. And uh, apparently he got his stuff on and left. Yeah. He was very upset. Um, as the night went on, he was less upset. And as far as the reason he left, 
I don't want to give any wrong information. I probably will know. I mean, I will say that within the company, um, people in the company who told me thought it had to do with punk. I cannot confirm that. Um, only that that's what people in the company thought. But um, but he was legitimate. But he was legitimately upset about something. You know, whatever it was, I don't know. And Mike Johnson actually had a thing um, the other day about um, you know he has not signed a new contract. And, you know, obviously he is, you know, of all those names when I talk about, you know, that, that they want to lock up, I would think that, you know, his deal's up because his deal's up in around roughly around April. It was actually it was actually up at the end of this year. But because of the time he took off because of the injury, they tacked it on at the end. So it goes right through. Basically, I think he's he's under his deal will end at at mania and um, put it this way. Um, it's. 2024 is probably a great year to be Drew McIntyre. I'll just say that. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.